All right, so let's go into the first practice session here. So after the catch routine, after the on-knee glove work, now it's time for the 30 minutes of defense. Now this 30 minutes, it can vary, right? Maybe you only want to use 15 minutes, maybe you want to do 45, it doesn't matter. But this is kind of where you can put your own spin on it as a coach, okay? So what I like to do my very first practice is I want to split the team out evenly amongst the four bases home, third, second, first. And what I want them to do is to just practice throwing the ball around the horn. So we're gonna start with the catcher. Catcher's gonna throw it to third base. Third base is gonna throw it second, second to first, first back to home. And we're just gonna keep going in that direction. Okay, we have multiple players on each base. One person takes the throw, makes the throw, goes behind the next person, then it's the next person's turn, okay? Try to split the, the players up evenly so you don't just have like five people at second and one at catcher. Okay, you can even have a non-catcher at home plate for this. All we're doing is catching and throwing. After they go around maybe five, six, seven times, whatever you want, some teams need more, okay? There were some older groups, we went around three or four times, we were good. Then we went the other direction, okay? But if they're struggling a little bit and they need to play catch, hey, have them go around a few times, have them do it 10 times, all right? Once you feel pretty comfortable with that, now we stop, then we start with the catcher again and we're going the opposite direction, we're going, home to first to second to third back to home you'll notice that this way is a little bit more challenging for the infielders because that now they have to like turn move their feet a little bit more it's a glove side spin throw um, and so they really have to do a good job of lining their shoulders up and getting their feet to create distance and direction to the next person they're throwing to so Really, really hammer that. You can also have some fun, especially with the older group, just to spice it up. If you want to make this a little more challenging, put a stopwatch on them, all right? So you can have groups and be like, all right, group one, let's go. They got to go around the horn twice. Maybe they got to go uh, home to third to second to first to home, back to first to second to third to home, and you put them on a stopwatch, right? And then, you know, the, the winning team gets something or whatever. The losing team has 10 push-ups or something, right? So you can just kind of create some competition out of that. So four corners, great. All right, so after the four corners throwing, we go into our four stations work. Today, we're gonna have four stations. Uh, I keep these about three, about three and a half minutes. It gives, me a, it gives us a little bit of time to pick up balls or to rotate, uh, but it also makes things run fairly smoothly. Three and a half minutes tends to be more than enough time, especially if you have two, three, or even four people at, in each group. So what I like to do before I kind of explain this, I like to have progressions. I noticed that if we're working on something with, with, with a young infielder, they're starting, to get the, they're starting to get the hang of it a little bit. They're starting to make some improvement. And then we take them right back and hit full length ground balls. What we just worked on usually doesn't stick. They revert back to old habits because the intensity change is so different. So I want to try to make the intensity adjustment, intensity, intensity change gradual so they can hold on and maintain some of the things that they are improving on. So today what we're doing, we're going to start. So station number one, we're going to be over at third base and we're, and we're basically just rolling them ground balls. So we're gonna work on just proper mechanics, proper routine. We're gonna be maybe about 30 feet away. We're just rolling them ground balls nice and slow. Make sure they got their hands out front, two hands. If they're starting to get it a little bit, we can work on backhands, we can work on forehands. If it's a slightly older group, we can hop the ball a little bit and get them used to picking out hops and try to catch each short hop. Right as soon as the ball hits the ground, that's what we're trying to catch. So that's kind of that second element if you're working with a more advanced group. Next, our second station is going to be at shortstop. Shortstop, we're gonna do a short fungo. Short fungo, I like to be uh, maybe right around the pitcher's mound area. I'm gonna be on one knee, just like this and I'm just gonna hit fungos like this. Hit ground balls with a bat. So it's gonna be, it's going to be, I'm not gonna hit the ball that hard, but it's going to be a slightly more intensity than the rolling of the ground ball and the infielder's gonna get used to seeing the balls off the bat. Don't feel like you have to be perfect with it. Some might be routine ground balls, some might be backhands, some might be forehands, that's totally okay. Don't worry about it. Then our third station is going to be full ground balls at first base. So we're gonna be back, there's gonna be a coach at home plate hitting ground balls to our, to our uh, infielders that are gonna be playing at traditional first base, but it's full length ground balls. Again, they're working on their footwork, they're working on their movement, their pre-pitch their pre -pitch setup, forehands, backhands, routine, whatever happens, okay? So 
do that. Now, one kind of note, if you are a little short on coaches, the, the rolling one at third base, players can do that. So you can have one player roll one twice through to each person and then have them rotate. You know, so you can kind of have the players run the rolling ground ball session if you would like. Then from there, our fourth station is gonna be more pop fly, more outfield oriented. So the outfield one tends to go pretty quickly because there's a lot of movement. So I like to do that around the second base area because that's gonna, uh, that's gonna be uh, wide open in this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start by rolling ground balls. I want the outfielder to get used to fielding with one hand. It doesn't matter if their glove foot or their throwing arm foot is forward. It doesn't really matter. That is split in the big leagues and that's just personal preference. But I want the outfielder to get used to fielding with one hand outside of their shoulders, okay? That's important. Glove out front, and we're gonna catch out here. So we're just gonna roll maybe about two or three apiece. The outfielders are gonna kinda of work in, catch it, and just kind of toss the ball back in, all right? So this is really short. This is maybe like a 40-foot roll. That's it, they're just working on the basics. From there, we're gonna throw them some pop flies. Again, not super high, but we're gonna get them used to working behind it, working through, catching the ball in this area, out front, not over our head, just doing things properly. Week one, really emphasizing the basics, working on crow hops, footwork, catching the ball properly, okay? Then after we do that two or three times, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a drill, it's a read and react. So pretend you are the player. Okay, I'm gonna be here without a glove, I'm the coach. You're going to flip me underhand, you're gonna flip me the ball. Now, if I catch it with this hand right here, you are going to drop step in that direction. So if I'm you, if I catch it here, if I'm you, I'm going to drop step this way and I'm gonna run that way. Coach, you're gonna get it. Basically, football pass over the shoulder. You're gonna keep it over the outside shoulder, you're gonna run underneath it and try to catch it on the run. If you flip me the ball, I catch it with this hand, you're gonna drop step that way. I'm gonna work, I'm gonna throw the ball over your shoulder and you're going to catch it. Don't feel like it has to be a long throw or a long run. It's more about working on the drop step, getting, having, taking a deep drop step, catching the ball on the run. And then finally what you can do if they're doing a nice job of that and they wanna kinda of take it up to the next level, you can do the same thing where they flip you the ball, they don't know which, which hand you're gonna catch it with, catch it with this one they drop step this way they're running now you throw it to the inside you throw it more towards the center and as they're running back like this they have to take their eyes off the ball and catch it this way okay same thing if I catch it with this hand they drop step they're running you throw it over the you throw it towards the center they have to take their eyes off the ball and catch it this way what this promotes is not panicking when the ball goes up in the air. Now I notice with a lot of youth teams, there are times that ball gets put in play and it seems like it's pure chaos on the field, right? There is just panic, it seems like it's almost setting in. So what we're trying to do in some of these drills is to institute just ways to kind of get them used to not panicking when the ball's in the air. So those four things you can do um, with, the, with the outfield group, it, it's a lot of fun. And, uh, but also it kind of gives them some good uh, basic fundamental skills for outfield. Another, another thing you can do if you, have the, if you have maybe more of the room is use tennis balls, tennis ball and tennis racket, hit balls in the air, have them run underneath it. It's a good way where, especially if people are a little afraid of the ball, um, tennis balls don't hurt, but also it's just kind of a way coach where you can easily hit balls in the air and they can get used to getting underneath them. So those are your four stations that you're gonna be using for your first day of practice. Good luck, have some fun with them.